Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Charles and this is the final episode. The last part, part two, big reveal type of thing for the roof project for my project house in Oxford, the one that's on the screen behind me. Proud to say, happy to say that it is finally done. The ridge cap shingles went on today. All the scaffolding and ladders and roof jacks and everything came down. We're done, uh, at least for the bulk of it. I mean, trim work and soffit, eventually we'll get to that stuff too, but at least for now, the roof structure has been completely replaced and all re-shingled. Now the house can stay nice and dry, which means that now we can finally look forward to other projects that can go forward without, you know, fear of them being completely destroyed. What we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of go like I did with the first part, and we're just going to kind of go through and replay some of the videos from the steps along the way for part two. So hopefully that's all right. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to do that here in a minute. A couple things I want to mention before we do that, though. First, massive, massive thank you to everybody that's supported, everybody that's helped, um, everybody that's lent a hand, everybody that's watched, all of you, thank you very much. Um, you know, people like my brother, my uncle, my dad, uh, and he was really helpful, especially towards the end where I was trying to get the last uh, financial hurdles over and things like that. He really came through for me. So, you know, none of this could have been done with without all the support and all the help of the people that helped in any way, shape, or form. So again, massive thank you. I really do appreciate it. That's uh, that's the first thing out of the way. Can't say enough about that. The second thing I want to mention is one that's probably going to get pointed out a lot, and that is I am not some sort of great professional roofer or anything to that effect. So I know that a lot of the steps along the way, people are going to criticize. That's fine. Uh, a lot of people are going to tell me what I did wrong or what I should have done or I should have done this or I should have hired these people or gone metal or done this or whatever. And that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion and their thoughts. In my case, um, it was kind of a worst case scenario that this needed to be done because realistically this house probably would not have survived another winter with the roof in the shape it was. That said, I'm also on a budget. I can't afford to go spend forty, fifty thousand dollars on a crew to come in to not only replace the roof structure and the roof that I did, but also to shore up all this stuff underneath the roof like we ended up having to do with the beam replacements and things like that. And I'm sure that there's better ways to have done that. I mean, there's better ways to do a lot of things that a lot of people do. And in my case, this is just the way we ended up doing it. Um, it's really not any different than how it was originally done, only we're using OSB instead of planking. Um, the rafters are newer lumber and they're no different than the original stuff. The original stuff was actually, you know, four by four. So I had less, uh, you know, vertical strength, I guess, whatever you want to call that. And, uh, you know, so we, we basically just mirrored what was there. It does look a lot worse because a lot of the debris is now in the attic and underfoot and all that stuff. But when you actually scrape all of that stuff back to just the regular roof structure, we basically replaced what was there with an equivalent or better version of modern materials. So it's not like we completely half-fast everything. Uh, it's just how it ended up being. So again, I know that there's better ways to do it and, and things like that, but I don't have that kind of money. I don't have a team behind me or or contractors working with me, stuff like that. So uh, just bear that in mind before you tear me a new one in the comments, just saying that. And the second half of that is I do want to mention that if you're doing anything like this, make sure that you reach out to your local towns, counties, municipalities for permits and regulations and rules and laws and codes and all that stuff. So in my case, I did actually reach out to get one and was told I didn't need one by, by the town. So that's localized, right? So that's not going to be the same for everybody, even in the same town. There may be different situations, different you know, circumstances that are going to warrant a building permit for one person for one project and another person with a project that might be similar may somehow need another permit instead. Like there's a lot of that stuff. So make sure you're reaching out and doing that stuff because you don't want to get into a project like this and then find out that you should have had something done and then you get fined and all this fun stuff. So uh, just want to make sure that, you know, not everybody just drums and tackles and rips off an entire roof of a house and everything thinking that uh, they're totally okay to do so because in some areas you may not be. You may need to have certain permits and things like that taken care of. In my case, I was good. I was given the okay, so cool. Anyway, that's the intro done. We're going to go back. Like I said, I'm just going to go back and find a bunch of footage that I had taken along the way and we're just going to kind of piece it together. And at the very end, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about it and final thoughts and how much of a relief it is to finally be done with the first really major project on this house that needs a lot of major projects. 
we're going to finally, finally finish these beams up that we've got going on. A bit dark in here, but uh, if you remember from the first one, we have this beam here. We have to replace that one, that top sill, top plate, whatever you want to call it. Should be relatively easy, though, in that all the floor work is supported by these new joists we put in. There's only one rafter that's even remotely touching that that entire beam and it's really not hooked to anything so in theory i can take a sawzall chop off the one remaining rafter that's barely there put my ladder right here and just tear it down put up new two by eights it really should be that simple so step one is to pull the tarp back and i've done most of that um kind of in a hurting spot though. Uh, I tweaked my knee the other day and it still acts up if I bend it pretty good. I'm finding nails everywhere, so that's great. But as you can see, tarp is gone. So now we need to figure out uh, how I'm gonna do this rafter thing. So what I want to do is get some rafters in place where they need to go, starting on this side. Before I worry about the beam, I wanna get the next three rafters in place and use that for some extra support. Well, two things with that. One, I have to get them up here. Uh, that's no fun feat. Although, you know, I may have an alternative. Um, oh, fuck, it's warm. All right, so it used to be, the first rafter I did, I actually took it out round back, leaned it up against the side of the house, hopped out the upstairs window, pulled it up, leaned it against the top of the house, went in the attic, pulled it in the attic. But since we have this wide open hole above their stairwell, well, I'm just gonna kinda try to feed them up the stairs and then see if I can pull them up that way. It actually worked. Um, the only downfall to it is it's a lot of back and forth because I'm by myself and really I can only get like one up at a time. If I start stacking two, it makes it harder to maneuver them up there. So I kinda have to lose all one at a time. And I need another 14. So uh, I put my hat on because I'm already sweating like crazy. All right, we're getting there. You can see behind me, I've got a few rafters in so far. We still have a long way to go though. Of course, the problem I have is that the boards I'm standing on, the floor here in the attic is basically just above the ceiling in the room below. And everything kind of tied into the original beams, which were much thicker. They were 10 inches wide. Well, I don't have a 10 inch wide replacement beam. I'm only going, well, four two by tens as a replacement um, that's, uh, width, I guess I'll call it. Uh, I'm trying to be very careful why I step over there. That's why this side is the more dangerous of the two. Until that beam is in there, until I've got new rafters on and new blocking in, um, you just have to be careful out there and there's really nothing to stand on. On this side over here, we had my tree, my safety net, um, because realistically, uh, if I were to grab my harness, which is around here somewhere, uh, that's not going to help me over here where I'm doing it, short of falling off. Falling in, it's not going to help. So that's kind of the uh, conundrum I'm in. But anyway, um, nothing to do but get back at it, I guess. So one more board, one more rafter, and then time to get dirty. We've got the beam out now, most of it. And, uh, back down to bare wood, or strong wood, I should say. So now, all that's left to do is to catch my breath <laughs> and uh, bring up one beam at a time, get it over into here, and then notch it over onto my notch over there without falling through the roof of the stairwell. Well, happy to say, beam number one is complete. <laughs> I'm trying to not drop my phone. Um, so as you can see, we've got it going all the other way. I've got my other tie across both spans of it, holding everything together that way. Haven't started the other room yet, but now that I've got this one in, uh, I want to keep getting some of the rafters done. So that's kind of where I'm at now is those are in. So now I'm going to take a break, recover, and then start loading more rafters up into the ceiling. And then that way, uh, I think there's only seven more i think on this end that i have to put in seven or eight um, but that'll be good that'll it'll make me feel a lot better having this side completely in 
as you can see, we have a very big gap that we need to bridge with new rafters. I have all the rafters I need for that pile over here. So I have them here. I just need to now get them in place. And then the biggest trick to do in this is not falling off of the roof because, well, if you remember, there's a big hole there and none of this uh, attic floor is really structural anymore, at least on this side. So um, that's kind of why I want to get the rafters on this side. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to put some extra blocking and some other boards and stuff around it, basically to give myself something to walk on. So I've got one more rafter right where I'm standing. That's going to go here. And then I have two more that actually have to go into place. The last one's kind of a tricky one though. So I at least need to get these first two in. And then that takes care of most of this side. And uh, makes me feel better about myself. Uh, so I've got to get that taken care of. Once that's on there, and i got to fix this one that's uh, by the vent here, I do need to straighten it out. Um, but otherwise, though, it's going to be ready to drop the tarp back over it and uh, be able to stretch the tarp over a little bit better than what we used to have, so that's great. And uh, thankfully, it's cooling off a little bit finally. I guess we were up to about 88 today, so I guess that explains why I'm so hot and sweaty. Anyway, back to where we're going, though. We are making progress. Uh, not too bad considering about myself, and I'm half dead, so cool. Uh, you can see we started ripping some of this back and then uh, I'm basically going to pull this back from inside as much as I can, try to get this on the other side and then uh, we're going to get that beam replaced, get these rafters replaced and then we can actually get some of this planking off up here. Now we're going to ignore the tarp that's hanging on for dear life there and you can see right here is that beam down there, very rotted. Um, and then this is the floor joist that are on there and this is the only rafter by tarp that has any any strength left holding on as much as it can um, but it's the other ones are doing nothing now if you look in there you can see i've got some two by fours supporting the roof structure in here because this is obviously not being supported right now and we don't want it going anywhere so um, i'm going to go ahead and just chop a notch through those floorboards there the ones that are still left and really that beam starts right there and just ends over there. So it's just a matter of chopping the boards off, uh, tight rope walking down that new joist over there, yanking that beam out in pieces because there's no way it's coming out as one. And then we'll drop a new beam in. It doesn't look like I've done much more over here since last week. Uh, I didn't really get a lot done, but I did add some more blocking. There's a lot more to go, but um, again, I was climbing up and down. So that's what that was for. And then as you can see behind me on the uh, L shape, um, I've got new rafters there and most of the sidewall uh, taken down. Uh, you can see I got the chimney knocked down, just took care of that, and that's where they all landed. Uh, not at once, they would have gone through the floor, but basically just knocked a bunch of them down piece by piece until I could, you know, get a smoother section up here. And basically that's just so we can do just like we did up here, is just, you know, roof right over it. It was not being used. I had no intention of using it at any point in time and uh, no point in keeping ingress options for water, right? All right, well, it's been a little bit, so we're gonna take the drone up and just kind of get an aerial view of what we've done so far. Uh, really haven't gotten too much more on the rafters done, but I have started putting some sheathing up. So, you know, that's good. So let's go take a look. So just to give you a kind of a bird's eye view of how I'm managing to get the sheathing up here all by myself without a ladder or lift thing, I rented another lift. And this is basically what I'm doing. I'm slinging off of the bottom with a couple of ratchet straps. Uh, I'm the only one around and uh, there's nobody anywhere near me. It's not like I'm over doorways or anything. So it's as safe as I can be. Um, basically, I just lift it straight up from the ground, swing it over. And as you can see, I've got it kind of resting against here and then from here what I do is I just uh, pretty much grab the the OSB pull it towards me trying to get it up onto one of these edges of the existing sheathing um, gives it something to stick to and then um, usually while I'm doing that I'm also taking down these hooks on this side so that way it'll you know swing over and drop right um, it might be easier if there was two people and I could tell them you know, turn it more, go up higher, move it out. Uh, but where it is right now isn't bad. And like I said, right now it's just me. So 
uh, that's how I've been doing it. Um, this is also how we did it on the other side as well, although on the other side uh, we had the other lift and we were in a much better position and we could go through like four or five sheets at a time and, and get them up. Plus we had multiple people, so that was a lot easier. Whereas now it's just me, so there's no point in stacking, you know, 10 different sheets on here when I'm the only one hauling them off. Uh, I have found that doing them one at a time gives me the freedom again to release the straps and then kind of swing it into place, you know, using gravity and so forth. Getting the first row down, that was the challenge because you don't want to drop it too far, but there's nothing to stop it from sliding down. So that was kind of the hard part. But once I got that part done, the rest of it again, I can just kind of drop it on top of the existing seams. Um, I didn't get my rafters completely square, so there is some extra work to be done, but uh, they're actually closer than I thought they'd be, so that's good. Um, right now I'm just kind of focused on piecing in what I can. I think this is the last piece of sheathing for the day and then I really have to get back into raftering. As a side note, uh, the other reason I haven't cut this one tree down, so I have some shade up here right now. All right, we are back to sheathing some more. Uh, you can see I've got my, I do have my roof jacks up here, so I'm, you know, sort of safe. When I'm dangling my sheet of OSB underneath the basket there, when I've got it slung up, I can swing it over to where it is there, and then as I release the tension on the cables, it'll actually just slide right down and just rest on those brackets, and then from there I can, you know, get up and drag it around to wherever I need to. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. Over in here you can see, you know, we've started going up the valley a little bit, but I've still got more rafters to do, and well, my goal of having this whole upstairs sheathed in today is taking a drastic turn for the slow. I had help and he brought a winch powered ladder lift. We got two sheets up and then the uh, the winch got all askew. It was a cheap Harbor Freight winch and it got kind of torqued and askew and the cable got wound around and things stopped winching. So I ran down to Tractor Supply and I bought another winch that I've got almost finished now and I'm assembling that now onto the existing cart so we can actually get this up here. And then you see up here, we're completely stripped on this side. I see I have to rebuild this section here. Uh, but we've got new rafters everywhere, with the exception of the one rafter that has to go down there. Got a little bit more done. Uh, we did get kind of slowed down by the winch, uh, JJ's winch dying. Uh, we, uh, he had to take off. My dad, uh, huge help today. Uh, yeah, huge, huge help. And we ended up, uh, he, he repaired JJ's winch. I went and bought a new one from Tractor Supply and got that all wired up. So we got that done. And we were able to bring a few more sheets up. So you can see behind me, we've closed more of this off. Now I've left the part that I'm in now open so that way we can get sheets out to here. And you can see we've started piecing together here. I've got two down here. One, I totally forgot how to count. So I cut that one a little short. Oops. And we did get one more on the other side. You can't see it, but on the other side there, we got one down there too. Uh, seems like we're good material-wise, lumber-wise. I know I'm going to be light on shingle bundles, so we're going to have to go get more of those. Um, but I may also be light on ridge caps and ice and water for the valleys over here on this side. So I'm going to go take inventory downstairs of what I still have and uh, how much I have. And then I'm going to go back home and recalculate and see where we're at. Today is the day, finally, that we get to see the roof completely sheathed in and... I believe, if my timing is right, shingles uh, on the other side. But I just want to show you this side real quick. Um, we'll go around this side of the tree. So you can see we do have it all sheathed in. That happened yesterday morning. Uh, basically just kind of a couple hours in the morning for the last few days just because it's the only time that I've got off before I have to go to work. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, that's right. It hasn't been raining. So yeah, we've got everything sheathed in. You can see we've started getting underlayment down, which is great. Happy to report, shingling is happening. That's that's shingling. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna get back to helping, but yep, shingles are finally going on. That is beyond a relief. Even though I have to go pick up 20 more bundles because I can't count for crap. Uh, there's a bigger story behind that. I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but maybe uh, I'll go back and look. And if I haven't mentioned it, I'll, I'll fill you in on why I need to go buy more, more shingles uh, to that extent. But anyway, uh, just a quick pause because I'm happy because shingles are happening. All 
All right, so just ran over to the house real quick just to take a peek and see how much uh, he was able to get done while I wasn't here. And uh, wow. Whole first half is done. Still got some shingles back there, but I'm gonna go get the rest of them tomorrow morning, first thing. And then basically the ready, uh, the other side will be ready to go. So within a day or two, we'll have this whole house shingled. Way in the back there, you see some white strips back there. Those are bundles of shingles. I have 20 more bundles, I think. This is the last batch of shingles that I have to buy for this house project. So we're basically down to the last day or two. Uh, the first side is on as of yesterday, as I showed you. The second side goes up today, uh, as much as we can at least, I guess. I don't know how long he's gonna be able to work. Obviously, I have to go to work by noon, but we needed more shingles. We were gonna run out, easily run out. So I went and picked up 20 more bundles just got them this morning, 1,400 pounds in the back of my car. It's not happy, but we're heading back over to the Oxford house to drop off these shingles and get started. And then we'll see uh, how it ends up. I would like to describe real quick what a good feeling is. And it's the fact that outside it is raining and I'm inside and I'm dry. So, just saying, that's what it means to have a good feeling about something. All right, it is the last day. Um, unless something horrible happens, God forbid, uh, this should be it. This should be the finishing part of the shingles. Uh, so, he's up on the roof right now. We've got the compressor hooked up and everything, and he is tying everything together. Picked up some extra drip edge this morning because I think we were a little light. So I guess I kind of lied a little bit when I said I just had to pick the shingles up and then there was nothing more. I uh, did have to go buy some more drip edge because I ran out, I guess. I don't know how, but uh, it happens, whatever. So he's putting the rest of that up and we're starting the shingling over here. And uh, it's about 10.30 right now. So this should be pretty much the end of the shingling. All the shingling should end up done today. And that basically wraps up the roof project. So if you have any questions on it, just leave them below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can for any of the ways that I did anything or money-wise or, or techniques or whatever. Any, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. So that part's done. What's next, I guess, is the next question. And well, Halloween is next and I can't wait for that. I've got three months to get ready. Uh, it seems long until you think about it, and then suddenly it doesn't seem long at all. Uh, there's a lot to do with that. Uh, otherwise, though, we did get a lot of the basement cleared out, so there's a lot more room to work down there when it comes to trying to uh, resupport uh, sagging beams or things like that. So that's kind of in the mix somewhere. But really, the next big project is probably going to be laying out, figuring out a layout for the electric in the house. Now that the house is dry, we can finally start doing stuff like that. Uh, now, a lot of the rooms are still covered in lath and plaster and miserable stuff to deal with, but it doesn't mean that we can't lay out where outlets need to go, where wire runs have to go, things like that. Now, that's not something that's gonna be done overnight. We're gonna have to do a lot of drawing. I have an idea, a rough idea of a, of a new floor plan for the house. There's gonna be a couple of walls I wanna shift or change or move or add, and that will obviously change where outlets and you know receptacles and lights and things go. So there's gonna be a lot of you know back to the drawing board type stuff, a lot of drafting, a lot of sketching, a lot of figuring when it comes to that. 
But that's kind of the next big step because really once you get electric in the house, it makes things a whole lot easier to work on. Uh, lots to look forward to and, and to sketch out on napkins. That's pretty much it. But I think the really, really the next big one is going to be the electric, figuring out where it's got to go, figuring out, you know, walls and, and openings and stuff like that. So looking forward to it, but we will uh, keep you posted as we keep getting to that part. For now, though, again, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for following along. Hopefully, uh, it's looking better, at least to, to the town. And uh, maybe we'll even finally get some paint on this thing before the end of summer. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.